It's all the time. So we are live on the Facebook. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, I should say not only ladies and gentlemen, but Pani Tapanova, Damen and Herren, uh, good evening. Uh, it's Connection Online Talk, and uh, we are broadcasting worldwide today from Kiev, Lviv, and Berlin. And uh, my name is Vadim Denisenko. I am Connection School uh, Program Director. And today I invited to this Connection Talk like an amazing group of transportation experts. And we will talk about mobility in the cities after the lockdown, the topic that is vibrant from day to day, from time quarantine started. And I'm sure that it will be vibrant years after this quarantine, just because we had really different experiences in terms of mobility uh, in our settlements all over the world. So a uh, little bit about Connections Talk Online. So once a week, we broadcast online talks with top experts in the field of urban development, regional development, and sustainable mobility. And uh, let me introduce today as a guest. So first of all, uh, Mr. Burkhard Horn, a consultant okay. on urban transport policy and planning. Uh, since 2017, uh, he had been working with a number of cities like Hamburg, Leipzig, Nuremberg, Münster, and uh, uh, for my pleasure, the city of Lviv. Uh, he is also former head of transport division at the Senate Department for Transport and Urban Development of the uh, city of Berlin. Yeah. And our next guest is Dmitro Bespalov, uh, CEO Hello. of. A plus S Ukraine consulting company that works in consulting in mobility, as you might suppose. Uh, he is also a professor, teaching professor in the Department of Urban Construction, Construction of Kiev National Construction and Architecture University. And our third guest uh, is Ora Stoleskiv, head of transportation department. Hi, of, head of transportation department of Lviv City Council. And uh, he also used to be manager of Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, uh, Lviv Development Group. So uh, good evening, colleagues. I'm happy to have you here. And uh, I'm sure that we will have fruitful and interesting conversation about uh, the mobility issues uh, of our nearest future and our today. So what I want to start uh, from is the question of uh, what is happening now. We are locked in our flats, in our rooms for, for last months, and we are really keen uh, what is going on in uh, somewhere outside our cities, because what we can see from the window I can read is not enough. And that's really valuable to hear the experience of uh, citizens of other cities, and also uh, if it's professional citizens in mobility. So can you please share with the audience what is happening now? What kind of measures are your city administrations or I don't know, managers did uh, during the last month? I think we can, we can uh, let, let's start with uh, Dimitro. Okay. So yeah, it seems that uh, in Kiev, uh, like in all Ukrainian city, we close the public transport and let the only one transportation, the main transportation mode is the private car. If you have the private car, you go any, anywhere you want. Uh, if you are a public transport user, you don't go anywhere. You go by foot uh, or bicycle, uh, by, but not by public transport. Uh, it uh, still operates uh, like special uh, transportation service. It's not the public transport now. Uh, it's special uh, transportation. Uh, if you have the special pass, you, could, you can use the, uh, this limited offer. Uh, but uh, it is not uh, uh, clear how to get this pass and uh, no, uh, not a lot of people get, get it and not uh, from this uh, people who get it, not all the use it. 
so uh, we can say that uh, it's uh, today the private car is the our main mode of transportation in the city. Unfortunately, I can even imagine how in future I will uh, speak with the publicity with people and will tell them uh, you want uh, you need to use the public transport because it's for the city it's good for the city uh, when our uh, our uh, people from the government uh, they close the public transport uh, in pub in my public speech uh, speeches uh, I, I say that the people who don't use the public transport they close it uh, because uh, I think they uh, even not imagine what is this. Uh, let's close the public transport. Who use it? Only some old people, um, not uh, not businessmen, and so on. So uh, this is unfortunate our situation. Uh, if uh, uh, talk about uh, traffic situation, so uh, during the quarantine we saw the uh, extremely. Uh, decrease of uh, traffic jams. Uh, if uh, I have the possibility, could I share my screen and show uh, some slides? Um, yeah, can, do you see it? see it? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So this is, uh, you see on your screen, the situation before the quarantine. Uh, the trend line, it's the delay. Delay by TomTom uh, -tom data and the uh, down line, it's the speed. So we had uh, extremely uh, high growth of uh, delay and uh, decrease of the speed in the network. What what was what was the result? So Kiev uh, was on the top uh, uh, twelve cities uh, congested city in the world by TomTom -tom rating. It's uh, 2019 uh, year mm -hmm. previous year, and I wonder if we uh, going up. Uh, and uh, above, uh, for example, Istanbul uh, this year. So it was like a surprise for me. Uh, but now the quarantine changed everything. Uh, and uh, I want to, sh to, to, uh, to show you this slide. Uh, so uh, what, what we saw, it's uh, the uh, extreme uh, role of uh, one uh, force. So 25% of uh, cars. Uh, they make the most delay for the old on the network. So it seems like the delay in the network uh, going up uh, uh, till some number of cars uh, in the network. Uh, we we believe that this uh, extreme high delay uh, more than fifty percent uh, daily. Uh, it's a uh, uh, number of cars more than eight hundred thousand. And if we uh, decrease the number of cars, uh, for example, till 600,000, so it's only 200,000 cars or less, one third, one, one fourth, so 25%, uh, we uh, receive the decrease of the delay in two or three times. So uh, this is like, we call it, or trying to uh, call it like demo version of uh, another Kiev. Uh, how it could be uh, during the quarantine. So every Kiev citizen driver could test uh, what what is how, how to uh, have the city without uh, extremely traffic uh, jams with, with without the congestion. And after the quarantine, we will have the chance uh, if uh, we will uh, decrease our car usage level till uh, like average European level, like. Uh, 50 percent for example now we have in Kiev 90 percent uh, we will receive the absolutely different situation uh, it will be enough space enough room for the drivers also so we, we could like test it and try to keep it but this awful situation was public transport I don't know I think everybody in Kiev in another Ukrainian city they will buy a car uh, because it's uh, for the next quarantines, I believe that it's not the last one. So we, we are only uh, starting to uh, live in such world. And uh, people will buy buying the car because in Ukraine, this is only one option to keep your mobility yeah, in the normal level in such cases. So uh, it's, you don't have to use it, but you will keep it uh, some, somewhere near because another quarantine and this is your mobility ticket. 
only for this. Okay, and may, okay. maybe we could also also could discuss what to do now, how, what the words we could find to explain people that it's not the good option for the modern city. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we'll talk about it uh, also, and I'm absolutely sure that I will come back to you uh, uh, with this 600,000 cars uh, number you mentioned a little bit later. Uh, I, I also want to share some small piece of data uh, with you. It's uh, yeah, it's the data of the last uh, cycling count. Uh, uh, in Kiev, it's um, an NGO, uh, it calls Ucycle. They count cyclists annually. And uh, this year, during the current time, uh, they did this, uh, how to say, partisan uh, type uh, counting. And they counted for two hours from uh, uh, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m in 23 locations and they do it from year to year last six years and this year uh, showed that uh, increase of psych bike usage uh, is two and a half times so now this this time during these two hours uh, people counted uh, 500 and uh, uh, 5500 uh, bikes and uh, last year it was not more than 2000 so that's uh, that's the quarantine uh, thing to, uh, for Kiev. But what about Lviv, Oras? Can you share some info with us? How is it going there? Uh, yes, hello everybody. Uh, actually, uh, our situation is quite uh, close to Kiev because we have actually the same legislation, uh, the same limits, limitations as uh, other cities has, uh, but I think we also have some uh, differences. Uh, I also prefer, uh, prepared a few slides, mostly with pictures. So I'll try to show you. Oh. Wait a minute. Uh, just my computer doesn't want to show. Okay. One moment. Okay, sorry, uh, my computer doesn't allow to show um, my my slides, so then I have to just uh, tell you. Uh, so uh, if you uh, look in our city, also we had a quite big reduction of uh, activity in the city. So uh, finally, you could see our streets uh, without traffic and transport, which is very unusual. Uh, something you could see only maybe in January first uh, or. Um, very early in Sundays. Uh, and also, uh, if you look uh, at the data, for example, shown by mobile operators, uh, for example, uh, from Kiev Star, as they showed that Lviv was one of the cities that um, stick to quarantine the most among the big cities. So it means that uh, many people actually stayed at home, worked from home, and didn't um, move so much uh, through the city. So, uh, but still, uh, we, we have uh, some shift in the mobility. For, some, for example, we uh, gathered some data from uh, the streets, uh, mostly from uh, our traffic lights. So, so it showed, for example, that on some main streets like Lechakovska Street, the reduction uh, of the traffic was uh, from um, 800 uh, cars in one hour to 500 cars, around 500 cars. So it's around uh, 33% uh, less uh, traffic. Uh, but uh, you could see it more uh, clearly in the city center where the reduction was almost 40% in the traffic. But at the same time, uh, we also uh, had some measurements of the pollution um, in, in different areas. And, and for example, on those streets like uh, Svoboda Avenue maybe, you know, where where is um, our opera theater? Uh, so the reduction of pollution there was uh, more than uh, 60%. And for example, on some streets like Lachakovska Street uh, or uh, Orodoska Street, the reduction was around 40% of pollution. Uh, so it's uh, 
quite significantly, actually. Uh, if you talk about the public transport, uh, our situation is uh, a bit different from, um, for example, Kiev, uh, because the uh, biggest problem for Kiev was that the uh, metro was closed. We don't have the metro, so uh, our uh, public transport continued to work. But of course, we had uh, quite a big reduction uh, in the uh, number of um, of, of, of the public transport which was uh, going. For example, um, municipal uh, buses, which are mostly big buses, the reduction was uh, 50% in, um, in how they uh, worked before the quarantine. Uh, and the private buses, they uh, have stopped working quite significantly. So uh, uh, only uh, more than only 25% uh, of the private buses work now uh, during the quarantine. Uh, while, uh, for example, in tram and trolley bus, uh, the reduction is only in 25% less uh, is given. So now uh, electric transport uh, gives uh, the most uh, of, um, like gives, makes the most uh, transportation. So it's actually also quite a big shift in the city uh, because now uh, people who use public transport, of course, it's much less uh, than it was before. Uh, you know that uh, only people who sit uh, can use public transport. Uh, so it's not allowed any standing passengers, only seated passengers. And uh, also there is a limitation on uh, kind of uh, only some uh, professions can, can work, uh, can uh, use public transport. But uh, at the same time, police doesn't um, check that much. So actually a lot of people, uh, as they uh, still they even are like, I'm not allowed to, to use public transport, they still use it. Uh, also what was done in the city, uh, we uh, canceled uh, all uh, like privileges, uh, some, I mean, uh, free riding, for example, for uh, people who are retired, uh, also even for um, military people and all those categories. Uh, so now all passengers have to pay. So it also uh, reduced uh, at one time, uh, for example, uh, the usage of public transport by, um, by the elderly people, which are the most threatened. At the same time, it gave more opportunities for people who work uh, to use uh, public transport. So it, it actually quite gave quite good results. Um, and uh, now um, we don't have very big queues uh, in, uh, for the public transport. Yet, of course, uh, people have to sometimes miss uh, one or two uh, buses to, to get where they want to. But at the same time, um, we have quite a big shift uh, in uh, usage. Uh, more, more people started to work, walk in the city. So a lot of people now walk to their uh, jobs or uh, some things that they do. And also uh, we see uh, a big, uh, much a uh, big rise in usage of bicycles, actually. Unfortunately, we don't have the data uh, showing uh, how, how it changed, but you could clearly see that uh, a lot of more people uh, are now using bicycles. And also, um, like, micro-mobility modes, uh, like, for example, electric scooters. Uh, people now starting to buy them. It's possible to buy them online. So uh, you clearly see that people are now buying them. Uh, and also, uh, you could see a lot of bikes uh, as well as the city because uh, of uh, different companies which gives, um, which provide um, food delivery. Yeah, like we have Uber Eats, uh, we have uh, uh, Raketa now companies. Uh, and you could see them a lot going around the city, uh, delivering uh, food from restaurants. And, and so also uh, now what is very quite interesting, we now have a new uh, sharing system of uh, scooters in the city. Uh, it was just introduced uh, a, few, a few weeks ago. It's now working uh, in test mode uh, in city center in one of the streets, main streets where is the bicycle infrastructure. And uh, it's uh, like the kind of system which is working in Europe where it's just scooter standing uh, on the street and you can uh, by the app, uh, take it and use it. Uh, and actually people use it. So it's not very cheap. 
<laughs> I would say, but still people use it. And you could also clearly see that uh, next bike has now become very popular. Uh, people use it uh, for transportation, but many also use it uh, just to spend their time, just to bike around the city because uh, they have nothing to do. But still, uh, it's now has become very uh, popular service. Okay, that's that's amazing that during the current time and all these limited limitation measures, uh, scooter sharing operator could manage to, uh, I don't know, introduce the system. Well, that's interesting. I I should mention that what you said is uh, using buses is allowed only in a seating mode. So I I will just throw the throw the anchor to the next uh, question, like after the after this one. So is it is it our future to sit in the buses only? It's like very comfortable, but uh, uh, I don't know, less, less convenient in terms of number of buses on the streets. Well, we'll talk about it. And Burkhardt, uh, I think Berlin managers, uh, are very are very known now. Are, are very vibrant in internet with their uh, solutions and their responses uh, to current times. So, can you share your opinion if it's as bright and good as we can read on a Guardian or whatever, or <laughs> we we want to hear critical uh, critical view? Well, first, um, hello from my side, and, and thanks very much for inviting me to this interesting discussion. It's already very fascinating for me to to see how big the difference are, are differences are between Kiev and and, and Lviv. I think that's something we we'll talk about later. What can we learn from from for the strategies you both cities now maybe need after um, after Corona? Berlin, of course, is a little bit different but maybe more similar to, to Lviv than, than, than to Kiev. Um, Berlin is a big city, 3.8 million inhabitants, and always in international comparison also to other big cities in Germany, but also in Europe, always already had a quite high level of use of public transport, cycling and, and, and walking. Car use uh, has gone down to far below 30% modal share, so something like 73, 75% of all trips of the people living within are done by public transport, um, bicycle and or by, by foot. And um, the situation now is, of course, we also had a lockdown. It, I think it wasn't that strong as in Ukraine. It wasn't really a, a enforced quarantine for everyone. You still could go out for exercise and do a walk around uh, the block and uh, a lot of people are still going or driving to work and of course shops were closed um, uh, almost everything else which causes um, public uh, causes traffic like cultural institutions uh, all the, the playgrounds everything was closed it's now opening up again partly part by part and with every week something else is opening up opening up again um, of course, mobility went down in general quite uh, quite a bit, um, starting mid of March, especially the first two weeks. In, in your impression, the streets were almost empty from cars, um, but still a lot of cyclists being around. And uh, what uh, Orest said about Leaf also happened in, in Berlin that you had the imagination that people walk more, and actually they they find out that they can walk around uh, in their blocks in the areas to go to the next shops which were still open and and so on i think we had a general reduction of of mobility i don't know something like um, maybe 40 50 percent which mostly had effect on public transport public transport went down from the normal level down to a use from something like 15 to 20 25 percent but still, uh, the service level was still up about around 75 to, to 80% because um, the government said we still need public transport for the people who want to go to work, who have to go to work in, in relevant uh, jobs. And of course, they should have uh, the capacity should be that uh, in public transport that they can use it without having fear to be infected. So social distancing should be possible still in public transport. Of course, that causes 
costs a lot of money to keep up this service level. And I think we'll have to talk about it later, what that means for the situation afterwards. Um, car use went down, but maybe not that as much as some had expected, something like 25, 30, 35% less. Um, and that's also quite different uh, depending on which part of the city you look. Cycling has at least stayed at the level um, uh, it has been before concerning the numbers and maybe has also even gone up a little bit in some parts, but we don't have reliable data on that to say this for sure. But let's say it's, it's been stayed uh, on the same level it has before the crisis concerning the numbers, which in relation to the mobility, which has uh, gone down in general, of course, means that uh, in the modal share cycle, cycling probably has, has grown in these times. What Berlin has done, besides um, keeping up quite a good level in public transport, is um, what you already mentioned, which is um, uh, uh, quite a hot issue in social media and so on, is um, putting up these temporary bike lanes, like also in other cities like, like Bogota and Colombia is happening. So um, um, for some streets, especially in the inner city, uh, one of the districts decided to um, uh, mark off very simple bike lines just with some, some yellow color and some signs and took off space for, for the cars, or mostly uh, a lane which was completely then dedicated to, to cycling, which of course is, um, uh, the, the legal frame is the special situation of, of the current crisis that you can implement these measures easier than you could if uh, this crisis wouldn't be. And of course, because uh, car traffic is lower than before, there wasn't um, much uh, opposition against these measures because especially the cyclists said, great, we always wanted this, now we already we have it and please keep it permanent, which is maybe not that easy, but maybe will be possible in some um, situations. Until now, it's mostly taking place in the inner city. So if you know Berlin, we have this, this uh, circle line of the light rail train system, the S-Bahn, where about a third of the population is living. Outside um, this circle line, these measures haven't taken place yet. There might be some where this will take place, but still it's mostly an inner city situation where already a lot of people are cycling much more than in the outer city. Another project which is starting right now, which I, for me actually is the most interesting one, is uh, the temporary closure of minor streets, also mostly in the districts uh, of the inner city, to uh, create more uh, space for pedestrians and to allow playing on the street again, to, so to allow some social activity with uh, still keeping up the social distancing you need, and by taking away uh, space from the cars in these minor streets, which are, aren't important for true traffic or something else. Oh, now we hear a dog about him. <laughs> and um, I think that's very interesting because that shows people what, what uh, more car-free streets can, can uh, bring them for, for benefits, in, completely independent from, from Corona, but um, that they learn again that uh, streets are more than just uh, to be used for cars, for cars driving or cars parking. Um, I think this, that's actually maybe on the long term more important uh, than these pop-up bike lanes, where we still have a, will have a discussion afterwards if they can be kept up, which I would like to happen, but I don't know, know if that will, is possible because um, they were put up very fast. There wasn't a broad discussion. And I think this will, discussion will become afterwards, especially if we will have again an increase in car traffic. That's also some, I, I also, fear a little bit, um, maybe um, similar to, 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 to Kiev, because people now are using cars, at least partly because they think they are safer there. And the public transport has a little bit the image that it's not safe because you can be infected there and you won't kind of, especially if mobility is increasing. And again, it will be hard to keep up the social distancing, the distances you need. and. That will be very, very interesting uh, what will happen there. And I think we now have to develop the discussions, what we can do to prevent car use to rise again. And 
also it should be a discussions not, not only within us as experts or within politics, but it has to be with the uh, civil society in the cities. Thank you very much for this overview. I think we, we have a great company here because it's, uh, it's a combination of expert community from one side who are developing some uh, policies, a uh, combination of those who consult to those who develop policies, a combination of those who implement those policies, and also kind of represent civil society too. And uh, I think it will be useful. Uh, what I wanted to say that you, Burkhardt, started, started to talk about this pop-up bike lanes and closing minor streets. And uh, so I've been searching, walking through internet to, to be prepared to this discussion. And what I've read, and also what I've read from uh, Dmitro and his blog and many others, uh, experts in mobility, that this lockdown have to be used as a window for opportunity. And many people who are uh, so-called advocates of sustainable mobility would like to use it as a window of, uh, of, of, for opportunity. And uh, I want to share with you like this, uh, this just, just uh, some random articles that came uh, to me, how this window of opportunities is used now as in Milan, who uh, would like to establish more cycling and pedestrian friendly streets, like Germany measures, New Zealand measures. Uh, also, uh, Dmitro, I think you posted that Berlin developed this temporary bike lane guide uh, and how to, how to establish it. And it's, it's now available for free in, in German only, but still, we can we all can use it and uh what i want to say uh what i want to ask now is Oris. so you you, you uh, i want to congratulate you first that the city just adopted new mobility plan the sustainable mobility plan with a set of let's say seven 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 goals there and it's very much sustainable goals but how you react is there any covid response activities in terms of infrastructure appeared it or not are you using COVID as a window of, of opportunities or, or 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 not yet uh yes uh, thank you for uh for your uh let's say words about uh, our uh, sustainable mobility plan yeah uh, it's been a, a big achievement for our city and if you say uh, what we expect uh, about if, whether it will, any, will be any changes about it or not, uh, I would say that actually uh, it represents uh, how the city should, uh, like the, the re real situation, how the city should uh, uh, work now and uh, where it should move. Uh, because uh, actually, uh, what the situation has shown us is that for the cities, it's very important. Uh, to be able uh, to shift, uh, for example, if one mode of mobility doesn't work for some reason, uh, we still uh, should keep um, the possibility for the mobility for most uh, of the people. For example, like now, uh, when the public transport is very limited in use, uh, we, there should be opportunities to use uh, other uh, modes of, of transport. Uh, it means like walking, cycling, and also car use, yeah? Uh, because uh, the same as, um, as said uh, Dmitro, uh, the car use is quite stable now in the city because most people that have cars mostly use them now for the transportation. And it's uh, really a big uh, challenge for the city uh, after um, after the um, uh, quarantine uh, changes uh, to actually uh, start uh, to, to sh like sh uh, shift people back to use public transport. Uh, so it will be a very big challenge for our city. If we talk about any new measures, uh, there were uh, not, not really uh, like any special measures done uh, during the quarantine, but still uh, what was done actually, we had um, quite a few new public lanes were done in the city, I mean, lanes for the public transport uh, during this current time, and because they were finally uh, approved by the uh, by the police. 
uh, some of them were approved in the winter time. So now when uh, there was a time to put uh, new markings on the, uh, I mean, on the asphalt, uh, our city received uh, quite a lot of new uh, public transport lanes. It actually made some uh, response uh, in the city. With, for example, we uh, received some, um, uh, a lot of letters Some also deputies were against it because they said, oh, uh, the public transport doesn't work now. Uh, a lot of people use cars and you do for public, uh, I mean, lanes for public transport. Uh, but still, if you look uh, how it's used now, uh, actually a lot of drivers, they uh, keep to the, to the lines. They actually don't use the, the uh, lanes for public transport. So actually we uh, hope uh, that after um, all the activities in the city will rise, uh, we'll uh, receive uh, the, the free window uh, for the public transport to work uh, as good as it works now. I mean, uh, what I'm saying about the good as it works now, uh, also one of the uh, opportunities that we uh, Electric transport has never worked so stable as it works now. Uh, now we have uh, like all the schedules uh, are kept uh, for around 95% uh, of all uh, the races are done in schedule. And also schedules uh, were um, done, uh, I mean, they were shifted. So uh, all, I mean, uh, they've, uh, the circle of uh, of the public transport was uh, is done was done smaller. So now the public transport, electric public transport, uh, working uh, much faster. Uh, and uh, also, it's, it's never been done before in our city, and it uh, also gives an opportunity uh, for much faster work, especially for the trolley buses. Okay, and but same time, it's what Burhar said that uh, to keep this service level high and fast. We have to pay and CD has to pay because we don't have passengers who pay for it, let's say just to compensate. And uh, uh, regarding this window of, of opportunities for Kiev, uh, Dmitro, you, you, you started to, to talk about it and, and I want to show this one slide that uh, in a video blog like a few weeks ago, uh, you, you told this number. So we used to have 900 southern cars in a, in a city streets every day, and it caused uh, dramatic, uh, dramatic uh, I don't know, traffic jams. But when we have 700 southerns, we, so we don't waste our time uh, standing in that jams. I just uh, and and you and this guy uh, on the side from you is the mayor's advisor who managed so-called Kiev traffic group, the group of professionals who are willing to change and shift the situation in Kiev in terms of mobility. So uh, this traffic group stated that our plan now is to have even less 600 southern cars on a street network. And that, uh, so how, how, so you uh, wanted to set this goal as a goal, as a benchmark uh, for the future after the lockdown when the traffic will become normal. So how, that, that's, as for me, that's the great uh, shift in thinking from let's say uh, demand, demand driven decisions like street widening to supply driven uh, decisions like, uh, compatibility concept that, uh, uh, but how, what kind of measures could be done here? Uh, did you decide, because it's just, just numbers, but I, I just can't understand how you will keep uh, 300,000 cars drivers who are willing to use it as it was before to see their home. Uh, okay, let me try to, uh explain what we are thinking about in this uh, manner. So for, for the people who don't know the Kiev, uh, the difference between 700 uh, or, or six, from six to 700,000 cars, active cars uh, daily, and uh, nine uh, or eight to 900,000 uh, cars, active cars in the network, 
it's like 45 minutes average trip and one and a half hour average trip. So before the quarantine, uh, we had uh, the average trip from one uh, hour 15 minutes till one hour uh, 30 minutes. You can imagine what, what the time loses uh, we take in Kiev. So uh, it's, it's a, a, a small reduction of cars uh, compared to all the numbers. We have significant uh, reduction of uh, traffic jams with, uh, for, for congestion. It's because uh, we have, you know, this old capacity, the network and the capacity. And when we go uh, to the uh, capacity line, we have the uh, huge uh, exponent growth of uh, delay uh now so uh we uh we don't uh, have the instruments to control the car usage because we, we don't have the ability to take the money for parking for example in kiev we don't able to do this because we don't have the system we have a problem with legislation so everybody park where, wherever they want we don't control the speed in the kiev so everybody uh, drive with uh, a speed, whatever they want. They want to drive 100 kilometers inside the city, they drive. 150 kilometers, no problem. It's okay, we, we don't have the system that, that control the speed. By the way, it's a problem for bicyclists. I really afraid that, that young people who now uh, drive the bicycle in the Kiev, they are in great danger because uh, the uh, more empty street provoke drivers to go faster and it's uh, dangerous. Uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, bicyclists will pay by their blood for this uh, situation uh, and it's awful. Uh, so uh, we, we, have, we have the possibility only to speak with the drivers and uh, to give this number, this information to them and show, uh, look guys, if we are uh, decrease a little bit, uh, one, uh, uh, we have five trips, for example, uh, per, per uh, week, for example. Uh, if we will uh, uh, take one of these trips by public transport or we will uh, make uh, the uh, working day inside the home, we'll uh, give all the meetings by Zoom and so on, we will receive the great situation. We will, uh, we will make the economy of the time for uh, everybody, a, a great economy. So it's only the promotion of this. So we don't have the real uh, instruments to do this. And uh, what I just want to say, it's about the public transport. We're saying that the public transport operates, but uh, there is uh, not uh, a lot of people inside, but we for forget it forget that uh, we have uh, some uh, more uh, player in this market is the private operators. So the private operators, now they take in the uh, huge loses and I heard that a lot of them uh, selling the rolling stock. So uh, what, we, what we receive about uh, after the quarantine, the rolling stock, the number of buses, marshutkas, so-called marshutkas, mini buses, will be reduced and we will receive a lower service uh, for the public transport. So more people inside the public transport. So it, it's, uh, I, I, I'm not very optimistic in this situation so yes i i know the the like the wind of opportunities it's it's all the crisis it's uh, the opportunity to change something to optimize but uh, to be honest i am not very optimistic because i'm afraid what will happen and how to work with this how to work with people with stakeholders nobody will believe me like a transport planner why you, we should develop the bicycle network by, but the uh, car not control the speed so the police not control the speed you you want to kill us you want that you, you we will drive the bicycle and the people on the car will 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 kill us so it's a problem actually i think and it's a problem in understanding because all the people uh, in our government they are car drivers they see the uh, city like the from the a wheel or from the window of their car and so they don't understand all this bicycle public transport it's some strange things the normal people driving the cars so we build the, the cities for the normal people uh, and this is the significant problem with this with understanding 
uh, maybe if we will somehow change it, uh, th this situation, and uh, maybe we will receive the real changes in, in our cities, because now it's not very optimistic from my point of view. I just want to clarify if this video blog with Maxim Bakhmatov was so. So that was the decision of Kyiv Traffic Group to set benchmark of reduction ac active cars in the network, active vehicles in the network, um, but it's not valid in terms of I don't know implementation. Just just to clarify. Uh, the city itself don't have the instruments, uh, the full set of instruments to make this. So the, like the promotion, like the goal, like the some uh, view or vision, it, it, it works actually. But uh, to have the real instruments to do this, to be honest, we don't have it uh, from, for, for the many, many reasons. Uh, so uh, what, 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 what I see my role in this, uh, we should uh, tell this to the more people, to the drivers uh, and try to, uh, that they will understand it and they will be our like uh, partners to, to uh, achieve this goal. But to, to only like, uh, to be the warrior that will try to, keep the people not using the cars especially in situation where the when the people will buy the cars because it's only the one mobility uh, accessibility actually mode uh, in kiev uh, in quarantine this regime and so on mm -hmm. so i i i can't I, I don't understand how to do this and what we what will have the problem is because europeans will uh, sell the uh, like dirty diesels uh, uh, for for us, for example, and we will uh, for the cheap for the uh, little money we will have the possibility to uh, buy this uh, dirty Volkswagen, for example, and drive around our cities. Uh, so in autumn we will receive the more uh, cars, I believe, and the, the junction. I think we will fight with the Moscow uh, for the city was the most congested uh, in the in the Europe. Uh, it's, it's my like forecast possible forecast i hope that it will not happen but mm -hmm. it's possible i can understand that very well because i also don't think you should be too optimistic and not only talk about windows of opportunity of course for kiev it's it's much worse situation than for us and we don't have a problem that that the mashutka stock is sold because we have different structures and what you just said about the, the cheap diesel cars, which will, which will come to Ukraine, that probably come from Germany, if we will have this, um, what is, what the, the automobile industry in Germany wants, because uh, something like a bonus of 5,000 euros, if you buy a new Tina car, then all the older cars will go to Eastern Europe. And that's yeah. a problem that you get from us. And I think public transport actually also for Germany is the crucial issue. Because um, I just was on a webinar this afternoon where um, another, some guy from a consultant company named Civity um, told us about three scenarios he has put up, what how public transport will develop in, in Germany, depending on how long the corona crisis will, will be. The most optimistic one was if everything will get to, norm, to normality already this, this autumn, which I don't think will be the case, then in about two years, we'll be on the level we have been in public transport use before the crisis. But if we'll have another lockdown in, in autumn, which is possible, mm -hmm. um, then it takes at least another year to 2023. And if it will take even longer, and then the, the shift of the public priorities will go even more to individual transport, be it car or be it bicycle, it'll take at least five years. And that in a situation where we actually in Germany want more public transport because of the, the climate crisis and so on. And we have this, this big financial problem we are running in because of the, the fares that are not coming in, the revenues aren't as good as this, and, and public money, we don't have it uh, infinitely, infinitely because we'll need it also for some social issues. And so we need a strategy now how to keep up public transport as good as possible 
And of course, we need more than also regulation for car traffic, which you don't have in Kiev, the possibilities, which of course in Germany, uh, we have more possibilities. But we also have some mayors who say, well, let's, let's uh, don't, um, let's reduce the parking fees for the next month because people need the car. It's easy to reduce them, but to, to make them higher again is much more harder. So we have also problems, not as much as you have, but we, um, uh, the bicycle can solve everything. We can put up hundreds of bicycle pop-up lanes in Berlin, would be great, but they can't replace the public transport. I also want to. I also want to continue work it uh, and and add just a little bit uh, of let's say information. So I, I highly recommend you to read Burkhardt's article at his uh, personal website about Corona and it's so both chances and risks that we meet. And uh, I, I want to continue about this uh, article. You Burkhardt uh, said uh, in the article that um, those, those who are who talk about this window of opportunity? It's uh, two two sides. Uh, one side is the sustainable urban mobility advocates, but another one is, let's say, car lobby, and it's a window for opportunity of opportunity for them too. Uh, and uh, what they can do, they can fight uh, and they can actually kill uh, using this necessity state. Uh, they can kill. All the polit policies that been uh, developed years by years regarding uh, climate change, like a climate change response, that now help us advocate like sustainable uh, solutions. Uh, what's what what could be done here? How do you think? And uh, that's the question to all of us because uh, I can show you like examples like this, like absolutely ridiculous, something that been ridiculous, let's say a year ago, it's Elon Musk's uh, car tunnel, uh, like car metro. Now it looks less ridiculous because you're separated, you're not in a crowd inside the bus. And uh, I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that all of you uh, saw, uh, I will not say, uh, all of you saw uh, this lovely video where, where the supermarket is built for car, user, car users. And that's, that's, that's something that looked ridiculous a year ago now become our reality because people start thinking and considering this as the safe way to, to not to be infected. So uh, how, how do you think what kind of new visions have to be developed by, uh, let's say, those who advocate sustainable solutions, not, not those who advocate uh, car-oriented solutions. Your ideas, colleagues, that's, I'm opening. Oh, we can't hear you, unfortunately. I haven't activated my mic, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm not that optimistic, yes, uh, but, but also, I'm not that pessimistic that the decisions from Elon Musk and so, so on will take place at least I don't think in Germany and, and anyway not in Berlin. Um, because I think the discussion, the general discussion in at least in Germany about necessities of, of, of climate change and uh, the influence Fridays for Future has in Germany already on politics, I think is uh, the discussions are already so far that we won't have completely uh, going back into the 60s or the 70s. That won't happen, but um, it still is, it's, the, the problem is that how people will behave. And um, uh, if it takes, the situations will take very long and people get used to use their car again, which maybe in Berlin they, they don't use just uh, park it at the street and normally use public transport or bicycling only, only use it if they're going on a holiday trip or so on. If they use it again every day and that for a longer time, that changes behavior in a way that's hard to change again 
in, 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 uh, in, in, in favor of more sustainable, sustainable trans transport modes. So what we have to do is, I think, um, as I already said, make the public transport as strong as possible and do what you can do to let people feel safe in public transport, even if it costs money. This money is much more better invested than in, uh, in uh, funds for the automobile industry that they can sell their cars better. But that's a political decision, which also in Germany will be very hard to, will be very hard discussed. Um, the second is, of course, that we learn some things, I think, right now, which are more freight conditions for public transport. We all learn that actually video conferences can work. <laughs> Maybe okay. we haven't used them that much before. In, in Germany, it wasn't that, that common before. People work at home and still they, they, they see it's, it's, it's possible to do some things in a different way we've done before, which reduces the demand of transport in general. And um, what we are right now learning, for example, we are starting now with, with, with schools again, very slowly. We started in a very different way for each kind of school, for younger children, older children, people, uh, 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 kids who have to make the exams. And that might be, again, a window of opportunity to learn that we can may have more flexible starting times of school and of work, which um, cuts our peaks in public transport, which actually causes the problems concerning the demand of, of, of rolling stock and so on. And if we now learn from uh, things we actually now have to live with because of the, the crisis, what can uh, have, which can have positive effects on, um, on the transport demand and how to, to fulfill this demand also in the future, that might help us actually in, in reduce the demand of cars and to let public transport to be able to, to fulfill the demands we, we, we have. Another thing which I think is quite positive that might in one way that people in Berlin right now learn that actually we have really good infrastructure concerning shops and things we need in our neighborhood. And they don't have to take your car to, to uh, drive to the next uh, big supermarket or mall uh, kilometers away. This, I think, is an experience which is very good because people then learn that they can do some, some, some tasks they're doing every day in a different way than they've done before the crisis. On the other hand, Berlin is growing and uh, um, we need more housing areas. And one strategy, of course, is where we still can densify existing quarters. It makes sense because then we have a city of, city of short distances. People can walk and take their bicycles. We now have the first people who say, well, this density thing isn't as good because um, density causes uh, more infection risks um, than if we have all our own uh, house with garden. This is actually, there's no, um, no research and no, no data which actually confirm this. Um, Berlin has much lower infection risks and data than uh, some, some rural areas in, in Bavaria. But still people think that way and we have now to to make clear it still makes sense to to continue with strategies uh, which for in, in urban development which uh, create more mixed uses more density because that's also in favor for sustainable nodes and um, to to get not in in a way where car use is uh, uh, strengthened yeah thank you Burkhardt, I just wanted to say that you, I, I, I really started to value my corner shop comparing to the time of one month before. Yeah, so idea of uh, mixed use and polycentric cities with uh, which fits most needs and working needs. Yeah, uh, show shows itself really good here and also telework as well. Uh, any any lessons, colleagues? Uh, I mean, uh, Dima, uh, artist. Do do you have any lessons from 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 the state you live currently? Uh, by the way, I'm uh, I also work or make the meetings remotely. Uh, I'm making the lectures in the university remotely 
but uh, to be honest, I don't like it or I don't sure that I like it. And uh, with the first possibility, I will. I, I want to meet with them offline. Uh, I really like the online and all these technical things. I have, you know, the phones, the laptop, the uh, this thing. So, but um, uh, I really miss for the uh, walking through the city. I really like the have the meetings in different parts of the city center and walk. And you have the possibility to think, you know, the blood with the oxygen. So. I really miss it. And I think uh, uh, when it will uh, end the quarantine, uh, we will go to our uh, our regular life and we will uh, go to do our um, uh, use, use uh, um, uh, patterns of mobility in Kiev, I believe uh, so. Uh, and what is our regular pattern? It's uh, the growing of delays. So we are using the cars and um, receiving the growing of delays, how we will fight, we will develop the public transport. We don't have the possibility to buy a lot of new uh, rolling stock. So we'll try to make faster the existing rolling stock. We will uh, make the separate lanes, the system of controlling. Uh, I will try to explain the people that civil servants that responsible for the public transport should use the public transport. And it's important for me uh, for, uh, to explain it for, for the people. It's the, the reason of the quality of this uh, public transport. And uh, of course, the bicycle infrastructure. Uh, but I'm afraid we will need uh, a, lot, uh, year, a lot of years to develop to do to build the safe infrastructure but i understand that using the money for one for example flyover junction i mean the big big junction we could uh, build almost all uh, main bicycle infrastructure but kiev uh, if you will uh, um, if you will review the master plan of kiev uh, you will you will see the you know, uh, the paradigm of development of 70s or 80s with uh, uh, the with, uh, highways, with the junctions, with uh, all this, you know, stuff that was uh, uh, in uh, the previous century, unfortunately. So we are like uh, saying that we will develop the city like it was uh, uh, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, I, I think we will need a time to change it. And I believe that uh, previously, you know, I thought that we will uh, um, analyze the problems uh, of Europeans, uh, what they have, uh, for example, in 70s, in 80s, with all these car problems. And we will jump uh, through this period and we will be smarter, we will uh, change everything. But now I see that we will make all these mistakes, we will multiply all these mistakes, and then we will make something different. But uh, there is a good news. We will buy this all these cars and our uh, car ownership level uh, growing extremely in Kiev, for example. We will receive all these problem, problems much faster because we have, don't have the infrastructure and money for infrastructure. And we will start to develop sustainable mobility faster. I think in a few years, we will uh, have the disaster in our mobility and we will start to do the normal things. So I'm uh, like pessimistical, optimistical in this case. Okay, I, I can say we can hear you, Orest. Yeah, but I want to add before you, you start that uh, I, I have this feeling that okay. during, the, during the current time period, many people, like millions of people experience something new. And it's in, and it depends on us if we will communicate this good experience and let's say like like, like Pavlov to to treat these people uh, uh, for their new experience because many people in Kiev for the first time in decades tried to ride a bike. Many people walked. Many people went to the nearest store, comparing to going to like Ashan, like far, far car-oriented supermarket. So we really have to, we as an expert, have to start this discussion with them, just for them to reflect on the experiences they had, and that's the very, very soft measure. And uh, um, and yes, Ora, sorry for interruption. 
Uh, yeah, what, what I wanted to add uh, that I'm also like uh, Dmitro in a quite like, uh, optimistical, pessimistical um, situation uh, because if you talk about pessimistic, I'm pretty sure that after, for example, all the um, situation uh, goes back to normal, uh, we'll again have quite big traffic jams in the city uh, for the same reason because people uh, will be more. Um, I would say feel more safe in their cars and still will not uh, have that much trust in public transport. So definitely there will be this uh, this time of uh, big traffic jams and uh, problems with public transport as well. I am quite uh, afraid uh, whether uh, the uh, private operators of the uh, public transport will be able uh, to quickly um, give the number of uh, buses that they have to do by by their uh, let's say uh, uh, documents yeah uh, before which they give before the, the crisis uh, but uh, what gives me more um, optimism uh, concerning our uh, our city is that we are buying now 100 buses so at least if uh, the, I mean private operators will not be able to put the buses will will have more uh, municipal buses and so actually we can uh, we have the opportunity to uh, give uh, the service but of course the money now is a very big problem because uh, as Burkhard said uh, the same for leave we have a very big reduction in our um, budget of the city so uh, exactly even now uh, we, we have uh, we give much more money for the municipal transport uh, to sustain their work and, and uh, i'm not very convinced that we'll have enough money uh, in maybe three or four months but uh, what also um, but i'm not so uh, convinced uh, that people will buy a lot of cars at least in the recent uh, half a year or a year because uh, a lot of people lost their jobs uh, they uh, get less money now uh, so if, if they haven't bought in the car before uh, i don't think that many people will be able to buy the cars in the near future uh, that's why um, we have to uh, give uh, after everything um, goes back to normal. We have to give, uh, try to give uh, the best uh, alternative for mobility as, it, as it's possible. Artist, I, I just wanted to ask. Uh, so, what we what we talk about is about as if uh, everything will become normal and we will continue to live with the new circumstances of less money, let's say with the economics didn't work for one month and people lost their jobs. But we also have to consider uh, like uh, new epoch of viruses, of contagious diseases that is spread with, uh, like with your breath. Uh, is there any plans how to reduce numbers of people inside the buses, inside the trams. Uh, let's say how how Lviv uh, thinks it could work. Are you going to, I don't know, sanitize everything? Are you going to, let's say, not not allowed allow people to sit only as you allowed now? Or what's the strategy here? Uh, I think uh, actually, yeah, the cleaning and the sanitization will be in, uh, what like quite a big goal uh, for quite a long time. Uh, I think for a year uh, at least. And, and I'm pretty convinced uh, that, the, for example, the public transport restriction uh, will work uh, longer than other restrictions uh, concerning even maybe work of uh, restaurants or other businesses. So um, I, I probably think that businesses will open um, more quickly than, for example, uh, will be uh, allowed to, uh, like all the public, I mean, all the people inside the public transport. Uh, so actually it will be, uh, when the spirit will uh, come, it will be a very big challenge to provide uh, the necessary mobility for the people who don't have uh, any individual, I mean, uh, who don't have cars, and who don't have bicycles. Uh, in this period, there will be not enough uh, stock, I mean, uh, rolling stock uh, of uh, public transport. 
so this will be the most problematic period. Yeah, okay. And uh, we unfortunately lost Burkhardt, but uh, we have a question from uh, those who are watching us uh, on a Facebook. And we have a question uh, regarding architecture and how can architecture interact and impact the spread of contagious diseases today. So any ideas regarding architecture because we've uh, been talking about mobility very much. That our audience is, uh, many of our audience are architects and they are curious. Any thoughts? If not, we will address this question to next discussion to professional but, but sh 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 should we change so significant our like mode of life so yes it's it's awful situation with this covid uh, uh, infection uh, but uh, i think it's important to, to, for us to keep our minds uh, like normal and uh, uh, we will go through this quarantine, this situation. Uh, definitely, we, we should prepare the next plan. What, what I'm thinking about this quarantine for Ukraine, it's also the disaster. Uh, the next quarantines, uh, I, I believe that uh, in future, we, we will have a few of them, minimum. Uh, we should prepare the plans. So now for the Ukrainian city is a chance to sit and uh, uh, write the plan for the next one and analyze what we uh, doing or did wrong and what we did right and uh, make the steps for another because I see from my point of view we're making something and we don't understand what we doing and what will be the result so we should take the opportunity and make it but to change uh, significantly uh, our life I mean uh, architecture adopted for for the uh, quarantine uh, I don't know the knowledge adopted to our quarantine it, it's not the world where we want to live probably uh, and uh, yes w we should do something with all this but maybe not the significant change the cities uh, and you know uh, prepare for the sitting at home and uh, well whatever we, we should uh, think so I don't uh, I, I don't want that this uh, situation uh, influence on the architecture so it's, it's the architecture before the quarantine and is the architecture after the quarantine. No, it's not the good idea, I think. Um, I was off, I think something that about 10 minutes because my Wi-Fi broke down. I hope you can see and hear me now again via my smartphone. Yeah, we can we can see you. Welcome back, Burkhardt. And <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, we, I'm we, lost. I've, I've lost something like 10 or 12 minutes of this discussion. Yeah, and we missed you. But now, now we are uh, we are answering the questions of the audience who is asking them through Facebook uh, at our broadcasting page. So the question is, how can architecture interact and impact the spread of contagious diseases today? So we have a architecture related audience, and they they want to know our opinion if architecture will change or react somehow to disease this time. If, if you know, if you have any ideas regarding that, we would like to hear. If not, we will go to the next comment. Uh, I'm not an I architect can, uh... and not an expert in this. I know there's, I think, quite a big discussion right now going on uh, within a lot of architects' uh, organizations about this issue. Um, of course, it's, it's, um, it's the way um, houses and flats are designed but also it's a it's a question of how the um, the surroundings in your 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 blocks your quarters are designed if there are possibilities for small parks for small uh, for recreation and so on and i think it's not only an issue of the building but it's an issue of 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 um, urban planning in in small scale <clears throat> Uh, what is, please. Yeah, uh, just recently uh, we had a discussion with our uh, main architect in the city about this uh, this issue. It was also a, an online discussion. And uh, what we actually discussed is uh, that we now uh, more clearly understood uh, this concept of uh, the city of short distances because it has now become very important for a lot of people. And a lot of people discovered uh, 
the new Lisbon neighborhoods. Uh, as you said, uh, everybody now uh, get more used to those shops that are uh, near them, yeah. And uh, a lot of people felt the importance for having uh, some supermarket uh, near their home or some other main uh, services close by to where they live. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the most uh, what will happen is that this trend for a um, uh, city of short distances and I would say uh, smart density uh, would continue. And what also a lot of people understood is the importance of, for example, balconies or uh, semi-private ter terraces uh, where uh, you can actually spend your time um, like outside without actually uh, very closely interacting with other people. Uh, so I think this uh, trend will uh, continue. So. Uh, for example, houses with terraces and more bigger balconies would uh, develop uh, much, uh, much more. And it's the same as uh, the importance of uh, public spaces close to the home, where you can, uh, for example, breathe some fresh air without uh, going to some far away. It's very important now. Yeah, I, I, sh I, I, sh I should add that it's pretty old urban planning concept. And we, we should do this and without the quarantine and all this COVID situation. So we, we, we know before that we should create the city for the uh, small distances and with all of this. So yeah, definitely. Maybe it will be a, a, a more wide people, wide, wide circle of people will understand it. But for the urban planners, it was no discussion and not the like question if we, we should do this or not. Yeah, this balcony is this is uh, vibrating inside me, so I, I have got emotional response. Just only thinking about it, and we have one more comment, so I will I will vocalize it because uh, those who are watching cannot see it. So we need to understand that changes in public transport after Corona in general generated is more difficult difficult than before. So to, just to just to sum up. Uh, the uh, uh, Vladimir would like to discuss if the social distancing have to become a main rule for public transportation in the future. How do you think? Is it something that will change or not? What about social distancing? Uh, I think it's almost uh, impossible to make in the modern big city to make the this like full social distances uh, measures uh, because we are live in the huge density uh, and uh, I I don't I don't think that we have the instruments to do this uh, and I uh, hope that we will not use the opportunity to build some you know. Uh, military uh, cities with the, uh, with the, uh, some specific rules uh, you have you you will able to go uh, outside in specific uh, hours for example and I will go to on another hours uh, it's not uh, such uh, places or the cities where the people wants to live uh, so yes, uh, I think it's it's the issue for the for the people. So uh, people, especially from the risk groups, uh, should think about how they like uh, what what's, what 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 their health, uh, how to make the more social social distances and so on. But for the uh, most people, for, for for me, for example, I'm a, like specialist in. Uh, urban planning and transport planning, I will not m change the pattern of what I'm thinking, how I uh, how I think that we should plan the transport, the mobility uh, in the cities. Uh, so, uh, so yes. Sorry. Okay, Burkhard, can you please switch off the one of the broadcasts? Yes, just a moment, just a moment. Yeah, that's, uh, it happens sometime when you use uh, in digitalized world. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. understood your yeah, point, yeah. Uh, Metro, and uh, that's that's fair. Uh, Burkhard uh, and Oris, how do you think the social distancing have to be achieved and if it should be achieved by public transportation authorities? 
I, I agree uh, with, I think with it's, no, uh, Boris. Yeah, Boris. The, Uh, okay, um, so um, if you look, for example, uh, now it will be more easy to advocate, for example, uh, to, to give more uh, rolling stock if you see that um, the public transport is overcrowded because uh, how the model worked before, uh, the operators, uh, they try to put as, as the amount of, uh, uh, I mean, the amount of uh, rolling stock uh, so the uh, their buses will be filled all, all the time for, for the maximum, yeah. And also, if you look, for example, at our norms, uh, the norm uh, uh, of uh, the capacity of uh, public transport is eight people uh, for one uh, square meter. Uh, so I think it's a really crazy number, and those norms uh, should be um, again. Uh, looked yeah for example in europe you know that's four people for one uh, square meter so maybe it should be even less uh, concerning the um, uh, capacity of public transport i think um i agree with the true it, it, it is impossible to to maintain social distancing and public transport in general after the crisis because um, that's actually that's not the way I hope that's not the way that people will will act as human beings in future that totally with social distance because we are human beings and social beings and i also agree with what you what what you said uh, before that i also want to meet my my friends and people and again and my colleagues and go to real life conferences and so on i just want to say that i think we can maybe we can learn that we can work more flexible in specific situations and what we can do to reduce Transport demand, still keeping up our social life, I think is good at first sight. And I think that we, we have to, to um, do as much as possible um, with uh, um, to, to, to use the capacities of public transport maybe more efficient than we do today. So what I said earlier, to try to reduce uh, the peak hours so we can um, with the with the, the same rolling stock, we can uh, make more efficient transport with a little bit more distance than today. So that more people have possible to sit, and not everybody has to stand crowded. So I think there are possibilities, but it will in any way we need money. We need investments in public transport in more rolling stock that you can have a denser, um, more more more. Um, uh, more frequent uh, um, possibilities to use uh, the lines that are mostly used and so on. And, but um, that's, we will need anyway, not only for social distances, not social, dis social distancing, because we need more uh, public transport as backbone, backbone for climate friendly urban transport. <clears throat> And continue, continue what you said about telework or, or being flexible in terms of working. So uh, we have a question from, uh, oh my God, Safine. Uh, it is optimistic that more people will work from home after crisis because they have, because they have this kind of experience, how to encourage people uh, work from home. Uh, how do, you, how do you think should we encourage people work from home? Uh, could, 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 could I support uh, Bu Bu uh, Buchard? Well, I think, uh, uh, like Buchard said, we should. Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, as Buchard said, I think it's uh, quite a good opportunity. Uh, so maybe some uh, kind of businesses, uh, some kind of uh, uh, different uh, jobs are uh, able to work uh, more frequently uh, from home. Uh, it's concerning, uh, for example, IT or other people which uh, work mostly uh, from their uh, from their computer and not communicating as much uh, with people. Uh, for example, if I look at my work, I think uh, uh, after uh, will also continue to the same. Uh, kind of uh, interaction uh, as it was before, uh, mostly people to 
human to human, yeah, interaction. Uh, but uh, I think it would be a good opportunity, maybe a lot of um, employees will uh, allow their uh, employers to work uh, from, um, from home, at least to give uh, opportunity for a few days to work from home or be more flexible uh, with their working hours. Okay. Dima, you started. And, uh, Yes, uh, l l let me just support what uh, Burkhardt say says. Uh, I, I mean, the opportunity to uh, make this like social uh, distancing. Uh, I, I will show it. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah. So the, the blue, uh, this is uh, like surface. It's the time and this is the number of trips of Kiev. Uh, you see, uh, this is our rush hour, uh, like a trip from home to work. And you see so much potential here because if somebody will start uh, the trip in six or seven, not an eight, uh, for example, or nine, we will receive uh, uh, su such less people inside the uh, rolling stock. And it's, uh, it's the uh, question for the uh, for the uh, people and for the employees, for for the uh, companies uh, that should uh, promote this, that should use it, and for the government uh, that should support it. Uh, and it's possible, it's mobility management, we forget it uh, in Ukraine, we uh, uh, such as, uh, long, for long years, we don't use all the instruments of mobility management, uh, how to shift all this. In Soviet Union, we did it. Uh, but now then in business, in our new uh, economy, we, uh, we don't do this. And it's like potential for us. And for the remote uh, workers, yes, we will receive uh, a lot remote workers, but I will disappoint maybe somebody, not a lot, because it's not very easy to work from home, actually, because uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a hard task to develop all the infrastructure for the company and for the all people to have the possibility to support the, for work from home. Uh, yes, we will build it, we will develop it in future, in 10 years, in 20 years, it will be much more people that uh, works from home, maybe will like adopt the homes, but not this uh, quarantine. So it's for us, it's like demo version, it's a teaser of all this situation we should uh, thinking about, uh, but I don't think in the autumn or in summer we will receive extreme growth of remote workers. Okay, and we have we have the last question and then wrap up our discussion. So the question is about digitalization. And do you think we will see more uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning in public transportation this same year? Artificial intelligence, deep learning. Well, we, we are... I, 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 I... I don't think that, I think uh, the uh, public transportation, very conservative uh, fields. And uh, we have, uh, you know, like best practice, the uh, good uh, like examples, how we should build it. And it's more like uh, public relations uh, now for us, for the PR, for the explaining, for the learning, for the education, not for the technical uh, like issues. I don't believe that, uh, I, I really like IT guys. I, I think that they rule the world now. Uh, with all these things, but uh, I don't think that they will significantly change how we uh, move around the city. This all this application like Uber, uh, we have, by the way, Uber Shuttle, it's like our mini bus service, like specific, uh, uh, it's like crazy. Uh, thing, but uh, um, I, I, I will make the example, uh, the uh, smart, we, we were talking about smart cities, smart cities, smart transportation, smart bus stop. Uh, in Kiev, for example, the smart bus stop means the bus stop with Wi-Fi, with solar battery, with USB. It's the smart bus stop in Kiev. But in Berlin, for example, or in each German city, the smart stop, it's a regular stop with the timetable, 
that uh, and we see that bus will come in 1050 for example and bus will come in 1050 this is the smart stop the smart solution is the economy this is like pragmatical solutions not the you know all this technical because of technical so i don't believe that uh, it uh, now will change significantly the transportation or the mobility they're changing but not significantly I agree, actually. I'm, I'm not an expert in artificial intelligence and deep learning. I don't know anything about it, so it will, I just can answer from my experience. I think there's a lot of potential in, in digital digitalization and public transport concerning how to buy, buy a ticket um, and have an integrated tariff and to combine a, a, a bus trip with a, with a um, um, bike share system, something like that. There's a lot of potential. But that's, um, I think that's it. And what is interesting actually that in, in Germany, the first um, public transport system, if you want to name it as such, which broke down during the crisis were all these um, plat platform-based ride pooling systems. They, they um, vanished from the market. And now what the only thing they are now doing is paid by the, by, by, by the public is uh, to offer rides for people working in, in hospitals at night, something like that. But not, not, no, they, their, their business model broke down. And I think it doesn't really exist in a way that really is a contribution for a sustainable and affordable public transport. If there is potential in digital legislation, no way, any, uh, uh, there is probably, but not in the amount as some people uh, say us, tell us. <laughs> Uh, I also think uh, that actually it will take quite a lot, a lot of time before uh, our public transport will get more uh, di digitalized. Uh, you know that many now cities, many companies are testing, have been testing before and let's continue to test the different aut autonomous uh, vehicle solutions. Uh, but before uh, those uh, solutions will be able to use uh, like in uh, like, like regular public transport, I'm pretty, pretty convinced it will take quite a lot of time. And uh, probably the situation uh, with the lockdown and uh, most probably economic crisis, which is uh, waiting us, uh, will only slow those uh, researches and those uh, uh, developments uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, but, but, but by the way, about the opportunities, uh, I, 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 I get the example with the diesel, with dirty diesel cars that we will buy from the Europeans. But we have another one, opportunities. Now Europe buying the uh, electric buses and uh, changing their diesel uh, buses for the electric. And we have the opportunity to buy these uh, diesel buses and develop the good uh, public transport infrastructure for the uh, low money, uh, and it will it will be better for ecology for us. Uh, it's about like smart solution, about like artificial intelligence. Yeah, so uh, this kind of art artificial intelligence should, should we have that understand that it's a good pragmatic solution. Okay, uh, well, as for me, I think it that uh, mobility is a service, like this new mobility as a service uh, thing can not it will not explode but it can uh, grow if it would suggest some ways to plan better trips with less crowded uh, well plan better plan less crowded trips maybe that could be a thing we've got one more comment and i cannot refuse uh, uh, to, to 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 make it because it's a little bit uh, sarcastic or I don't know, we, it has a smile at the end. So the question is, do you think that Kiev's great dependence on the metro will be reshaped after the current time? So are we going to uh, concentrate our attention to, let's say, tram system, uh, improving bus system, make priorities on the traffic lights, or we'll still invest in metro and that's all? How do you think? Uh, uh, I think we actually... 
We actually yeah. say it and be, even before the situation. The metro is a great public transport system, but it's monopolist in Kiev and it's dangerous for the whole city. We, sh we should have the support of tram system with a BRT, I don't know, something with normal surface transport, ground transport. So yes, we should do this. And it's not about the COVID and quarantine. We should do this uh, absolutely. I can only agree because actually one of the strengths of Berlin also compared to other big cities is that we have so they have a very robust system because if one breaks down the other still works so um, when we have this big big S-Bahn uh, light rail crisis in the mid of the last decade um, there was still was the metro and there still was the trams and the buses and that was amazing how good that worked as a backup and I think in a city as big as Kiev you need several um, public transport modes because there's always something that can happen and you need backup systems that people have alternatives that not, that not the car is the only alternative. Well, colleagues, thanks a lot. Uh, I will wrap up our discussion. That was the last comment. And I want to thank uh, to all those who wrote their comments and who've been listening to us for uh, our and a half. Wow. Uh, that time. Uh, just slide it outside of, uh, from my legs, let's say. Well, uh, I'm really happy to have you here. I'm really happy for uh, Lviv, uh, Orest. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that you're a great manager of uh, public transportation department and I want to congratulate City with this choice. Uh, well, thank you very much Burkhardt for, for your pessimistic optimism and uh, that you link, uh, wisely link uh, transportation, mobility and urban planning in this talk and you provided these links to us. And thank you Dmitro showing us extremum of Kyiv. I hope uh, will, uh, well, city managers will be wise. Uh, we will uh, try to do something with uh, Kyiv's master plan with less uh, multi-level junctions uh, and uh, widening streets uh, to, to fight this plan. Uh, and thank you to all those who've been listening. It was Connection Stock uh, online from uh, quarantine period. We will meet next time May 5th with uh, again me and uh, Urs Toman, who is uh, co-founder of Connections. We will speak Ukrainian and Russian uh, the next time, and we will talk about our next educational program called Spaces. It's about special planning uh, for uh, amalgamated communities, the newly established um, uh, administrati administrative uh, institutions in Ukraine. We, we are in the middle of decentralization reform now. So thank you very much. We'll meet you May 5th. And Colleagues, thank you for this uh, talk. <laughs>